Well, good morning and thank you once again for joining me for this time of morning prayer on Tuesday here from the Vicarage of St Mary's in Sanderstead. A ship was sinking in the middle of a storm and the captain called out to the crew, does anyone here know how to pray? One man stepped forward and he said, yes, I do. Wonderful, said the captain, because you can pray while the rest of us put on a life jacket because we are one short. I wonder if he'd wished that he kept his mouth shut. In our reading today, we are on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. It is a beautiful lake, but I guess if you've been out all night doing what you know best and there's nothing to show for it by morning, I imagine it loses its sense of appeal. Jesus may well have watched Simon arrive on the shore as he unloaded the 300 foot or so nets in order to begin mending them. Tired, frustrated and with no fish, I think rather than mend them, I might have sold them. Yet knowing Simon's frustration, Jesus asks to use his boat as a floating pulpit so that he can talk to the crowd. I love this scene in Franco Zeffirelli's Jesus of Nazareth. Because when Jesus asks to use the boat, Peter, who is clearly tired and frustrated, says, Come, you can preach to the fish. Jesus tells Peter to let down the nets in deep water. Again, if it had been me, I might have wished that I had moored on the other side of the lake. After all, what did Jesus know about fishing? He was a carpenter. But this was a divine encounter. Throughout history, there have been encounters of all sorts that have changed people's lives. Graham Alexander Bell met Thomas Watson and the telephone was developed. When Steve Jobs met Steve Wozniak, Apple computers were born. When Henry Ford met Thomas Edison, the Ford Motor Company began. When people encounter God, though, the miraculous happens. The Gospels are stories of encounter. People who meet with Jesus and find that their lives are changed forever. Some we know walk away and metaphorically speaking, sold their nets. While others stay and like Simon said, Lord, if you say so. As we reflect on this morning's readings, maybe throughout the day, I wonder, have we had encounters that have changed our lives and subsequently the lives of others? How has our life changed since encountering Jesus? And is there perhaps a boat in our life today that God is asking to get into? Will we moor elsewhere or will we, like Simon say, Lord, if you say so? O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night by night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out throughout the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom for his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. 
In keeping them there is great reward, but who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults, keep back your servant also from the insolent, do not let them have dominion over me, then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Now when the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes, the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. Then the fire of the Lord burned against them, and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. But the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire abated. So that place was called Taberera, because the fire of the Lord burned against them. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish that we used to eat in Egypt, for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Now the manna was like coriander seed, and its colour was like the colour of gum resin. The people went around and gathered it, ground it in mills or beat it into mortars, then boiled it in pots and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell on the camp in the night, the manna would fall with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all of the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servants so badly? Why have I not found favour in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people upon me? Did I conceive these people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom, and nurse carries a suckling child? To the land that you promised an oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give to all of these people? For they come weeping and say to me, Give us meat. I am not able to carry these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favour in your sight, do not let me see misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not bear it all by yourself. And say to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow you shall eat meat. For you have wailed in the hearing of the Lord, saying, If only we had meat to eat. Surely it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall eat not only one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes so loathsome to you because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and have wailed before him saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, The people I am with number six hundred thousand on foot and you say I will give them meat that they may not eat for a whole month. Are there surely enough flocks and herds to slaughter them? Are there enough fish in the sea to catch them? The Lord then said to Moses, Is the Lord's power limited? Now you shall see whether my words shall come true or not. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to them, and took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. 
and a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My lord Moses, stop them. But the Lord said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Then a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quails from the sea, and let them fall beside the camp, about a day's journey on this side, and a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp, around two cubits deep on the ground. So all the people worked all that day and night, and the next day gathering the quails. The least among gathered was ten homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. Today's canticle is called A Song of the New Creation. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, the your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people the people who I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signalled to their partners on the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken, and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. Father, as we go about our daily lives, please teach us to be thankful for every precious minute of time that we are given, that we may say yes if you say so. Lord, help us not to take for granted your gift of life, our health and our strength, the love and support of family and friends, the beauty and vastness of your creation. Lord, you have given us so very much. Please help us to give you something in return. The love of our hearts, the willingness to serve you, and a readiness to share your love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your blessing to rest upon our Church of St Mary's and St James as well as the communities of those who have joined us to pray today. Lord, in particular, we pray for Rachel Chad, for Mike and Janet Whittaker, for Lino Delia, for Jenny Ahrens, for Margaret Dickens and Joe Wisdom. Lord, help us to have vision, to see the kind of church that you desire in the world today. And may we never lose sight of the many and varied needs of our own neighbourhoods. And may we always be found willing and able to help others wherever we can. Lord, we pray today for families. Lord, make your loving presence felt among them all. Especially those for whom family life is difficult and testing in the lockdown. Lord, be with those who have no family to care for them. Comfort those whose children cause them worry or heartache and strengthen those whose children are in danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are less fortunate than ourselves, those who live in developing countries and countries where there is little stability. We pray for all people wherever they may be, who struggle to find freedom from oppression. Lord, teach us to be ever mindful of those in the world who are weary with what can feel like a relentless struggle in deep waters. Lord, be merciful, we pray, to all those who face difficulties in their personal lives today. We pray for those who are sick, the bereaved, those with problems in their families, in their friendships, neighbourhoods or their workplace. Lord, help us to be calm in times of uncertainty, patient with those around us and steadfast in the knowledge that you share each and every moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Christ, your words declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. going to close with some words from Jesus calling.
Come away with me for a while. The world with its non-stop demands can be put on hold. Most people put me on hold, rationalising that someday they will find time to focus upon me. But the longer people push me into the background of their lives, the harder it is for them to find me. You live among people who glorify busyness. They have made time for a tyrant that controls their life. Even those who know me as saviour tend to march in the tempo of the world. They have brought into the illusion that more is always better. More meetings, more programmes, more activity. I have called you to follow me, making time alone with me your highest priority and your deepest joy. It is a pathway largely unappreciated and often despised. However, those who choose it have chosen the better thing, which will never be taken away from them. Moreover, as you walk close to me, I am able to bless others through you. My friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I'd like to read from My Dear Child. I can understand that you often feel perplexed about the amount of suffering and sickness that exists in the world. And I know how distressing it is when someone close to you is ill. But can you imagine how distressing it is for me? Yes, my child, I am deeply disturbed to see those I love in pain, whether it is emotional, spiritual or physical. My heart is full of love and compassion for those who are chronically sick those who are disabled, deformed or mentally ill. I want to reach them with my love. I want to heal and bring peace to their souls and their bodies. For it is my will to make all whole. If I want to heal, why do so many remain sick? I often have to settle for something less than my best in the lives of my children. I make the most of every situation. I am ready to give, to heal or to deliver, and I await the right opportunity. My dear child, nothing makes you more perplexed than being ill. As soon as there is anything physically wrong with you, even a minor stomach complaint, you instinctively know that this is not my purpose for you, and you have great desire to be well again. I want you to be strong and healthy. I am glad you are learning to resist these sicknesses. When you feel the first symptoms, stand against them 
rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Every one of us needs healing in some way, for no one is perfect. But there are times when particular sicknesses afflict and affect you, making it difficult for you to do what I would like. So of course I want to restore you, for I am glorified when I heal. Some people think that I can be glorified in sickness, but that this is not strictly true. I can be glorified in any of my children who are sick, but I am never glorified in the sickness itself. You are not expecting to find sickness in heaven, are you? And Jesus has taught you to pray that my kingdom shall come and my will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so I want you to be healed. Let us pray. Loving God, we bring before you the sick and the suffering of our world. All those who are wrestling with illness in their bodies, their minds or their spirits. Lord, we pray for those afflicted in body, enduring physical pain, overwhelmed by disabling disease, for those waiting for an operation or those fearful of what the future may hold or living with the knowledge of a terminal illness. We pray for those who are disturbed or troubled in their minds, those whose confidence has broken down, those who feel unable to cope with the pressures of daily life, those who are oppressed by terrors and their imaginations those facing the dark despair of clinical depression. We pray for those who are afflicted in their spirits, those who feel their lives are empty or whose beliefs are threatened, those who have lost their faith, those who have no power to satisfy or whose hearts have become bitter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for all who work to bring help, wholeness and healing to the sick. We pray for doctors and nurses, surgeons and medical staff, psychiatrists, counsellors, clergy and therapists. Lord, support and strengthen all those who share in your work of healing, all who strive to bring relief, all who minister to others. Grant them your wisdom and guidance, your care and compassion, your strength and your support. Equip them in all that they do and bring wholeness through them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church in the healing ministry that you have called it to exercise. For the healing of body, minds and souls which only you can offer. Lord, please grant that your people everywhere may be so filled with your Holy Spirit and so touched by the grace of Christ that they may share effectively in the wider work of healing through their life and their witness, bringing wholeness to a broken people and a broken world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If this morning you know of somebody who is unwell or a friend or family member have asked you to pray for their healing, I invite you now to just bring their names before the throne of God's grace, knowing that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever and that he longs to place his hands upon them and you and make you whole. And so let us pray for those we know who are sick. Heavenly Father, in your goodness, 
your love and your compassion. Stretch forth your hand to bring healing and wholeness to those we have named before you. Lord, we pray especially this day for those in our own church family here who are unwell. We pray, Lord, for Ben, who has the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, for Fiona, and we pray for Kim. Lord, give them the gift of your healing this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus, have become and overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. If you would like us to pray for you by name at any of our services, please do send us your prayer requests via our website at St Mary's Sunderstead. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.